So let's set up and render out this animation, this time using Redshift, as it is a really nice quick GPU renderer. And I can already hear the complaints. Yes, it costs and it doesn't come for free with Houdini. And that's absolutely true. However, at the current moment, when working as a small studio or as a freelancer, a third party render engine, such as Redshift, Octane, Arnold, V-Ray, Renderman, or anything else I'm forgetting here, are pretty much your only chance of rendering out an animation out of Houdini on a single machine. Otherwise, with Mantra, as it's not that fast, you'd have to rely on a render farm or an online render farm, which you could do. It'll just result in additional costs as well. So I decided on Redshift, and to set up this animation, as Redshift is already installed on my Geonode here, I can see this Redshift OBJ tag. And in here, I want to check the formations in this particles blur from velocity attribute. This will make sure that the motion blur will come over correctly from our simulation. And in the particles tab, I want to check render object as particles. Now for rendering, what I like to do is pin this tab here and close these other three tabs and then hit control T two times, creating two new tabs. The last tabs I'm gonna set to out and the middle tab I'm gonna set to a material. Let's create a redshift material using a redshift material builder, which is just like a wrapper around a redshift material. Diving in here, you can see the materials outputs. And to configure a material, I want to drop down a redshift material node and wire this in the surface. I'm going to use this material to render those particles. So I need a way of accessing this particle's colors and piping them into the base properties diffuse color slot here. To import an attribute into redshift, just going to drop down a RS point attribute node, which I'm going to set to import CD, the color, and wire this into my diffuse color like so. Let's go up one level, call this one particles. Let's just copy it and paste it. Call this one BG for background and dive in there. And in here, I want to set up a material for a ground plane. So I'm going to delete this particle attribute lookup here and instead just going to drop down a ramp, wire this into my diffuse color. And in here, I want to dial back the reflection color to zero to have zero weight. The ramp I'm going to set up to a few colors that I like. And I want to make sure that these keyframes are set to B spline. So they interpolate a bit nicer. Something like this. Let's go up one level. And in my Redshift tab here, let's control click on the Redshift button here, which under the out context generates those Redshift output drop where I can configure my render. And in here, all I want to do under the Redshift tab, I want to enable global illumination here by setting the primary engine to brute force and the secondary engine to brute force as well. Finally, let's light this the most primitive way we could think of by control clicking on the RS light dome, dropping down just a dome light. And under the light tab on the dome map, I want to set up an HDR like so. And finally, let's configure figure our ground plane by dropping down a grid, scaling this up to maybe five, diving in there. And in here, I want to set up a UV texture again. By default, this is set up to be a flat projection from the top, which is fine. Set up again. And finally, I want to control click on the camera, setting up a camera. And again, let's link that to the viewport. So it moves with my viewport. Let's sort this a bit, set up materials. So my grid gets the BG material and my geo under the render in the material setup gets the particles material like so. Okay, let's save this, go to our Redshift tab and hit render view. And there we have it, our basic rendering. And that already is looking kind of nice. So let's close it. And to render this out, I'd go to out the Redshift drop, make sure that under the output, I have set up a correct file path. So currently we're gonna render into the projects folder create a subfolder called render, and then directly write out those images there. What I like to do is just copy this expression here and paste it again. So we're now creating a subfolder for this project as well. Then I want to make sure that I checked render frame range. And all I have to do is click render to disk to render this out. If you guys like what we're doing and want to support us, you might want to head over to our Patreon. And we'd like to thank all of our patrons, especially Rafik Anadol, Chris Hebert, Important Looking Pirates, Encore VFX, Patrick Fillion, and Gearbox Studio Quebec. Thanks so much, guys.